Thank you, Brother Gibbon. This morning, like every morning here in the U.S., there's thousands of newspapers in which millions of people put in a quarter or 50 cents, including my lovely wife this morning, of which the guts of that newspaper is the editorial page which discusses the needs of humanity. Some of them are legitimate, I would agree, and that's what sells the newspaper. Now, there are other needs that you got up with this morning. I had a tender heart for the people that lost that child. I had a need of the Lord to strengthen me right in there. I've been through it, and I know what they're hurting. There are legitimate needs in this world in that sense. The whole world is filled with needs, but I'm going to tell you from God's perspective, we got one need, and that's the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And I know there's not two needs, because the first need solved all the other needs. Yes. And if it don't solve it, it's not a need, it's a want, it's a wish, it's right. a dream, or whatever. Right. The right. blood of Jesus Christ Amen. is the one need that I want to talk about this morning. Amen. Now, if you need justification, if you need uh, uh, redemption, if you need to be close to God, if you need to draw near to him, all of those things, of course, the blood of Jesus Christ can do. And we've heard it in our discussion. And if God can do all those things, surely he can sanctify us, which I'm supposed to talk Amen. about. And I nearly rest my case already, <laughs> and we could leave early. But as the young brother said, I hadn't commented on Hebrews 9. I haven't either, so I'm going to comment on it. But before that, let's turn to Hebrews, the 13th chapter, beginning with the 11th verse. Now, while you're turning there, reach over and pinch Hebrews 9 which I haven't commented on, and we'll look in Hebrews 9 also. Now, lest you think I'm going off half-cocked here and saying the blood of Jesus Christ is all we need, I want to tell you I'm headed to the fact that the blood of Jesus Christ upholds the very throne of God. And if the blood of Jesus Christ upholds it, saved it from collapsing, if it upholds it, then it can sanctify. Amen. And we need to uh, have an appreciation of it in that sense. Now, here in the th 13th chapter, beginning with the 11th verse, the high priest carries the blood of animals into the most holy place as a sin offering. But the bodies are burned outside the camp. And so... Jesus also suffered outside the camp or outside the city gate mm -hmm. to make the people holy or to sanctify the people. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, catch this verse, Hebrews the ninth chapter, and we'll just look at the 13th verse. The blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer sprinkled on those who are ceremonially unclean, sanctify them so that they are outwardly clean. Now, throughout the book of Hebrews, and especially in this context, but it's throughout the book of Hebrews from the very first chapter to now the closing chapter, the writer is comparing the superiority of Jesus, the superiority of his priesthood, superiority of the new covenant, the superiority of the whole new covenant system to the old order. And he is comparing these two things. Now, we have read uh, two verses here in which we are comparing what happened in the sanctification under the old covenant to what happens in Jesus. And here in the first one, it says in comparison, and so we have been made sanctified or holy. Now, therefore, I conclude that whatever happened in that sacrificial system was setting the people aside to serve their God. That, of course, was principally what the uh, sacrificial system was about under the Old Covenant, was 
separating the people from the outside world. And as Brother Dallas brought to our mind, they thank God for sanctifying their nation, mm -hmm. that they were the ones capable and suitable to serve God. And of course, to that degree, uh, it had a, uh, it, there were great blessings in that old covenant. Now, it's not to be compared to our blessing. And ours is vastly superior, as you well understand. Now, certain sacrifices under that old covenant could be eaten. Certain of them couldn't. Certain people participated in this one way or the other. But it was all designed to separate them unto God and make them a part and parcel of which the sacrifice was to uh, avail itself of. So if it was a sin offering, they were participating in this sin offering. And to that degree, there was value in that. They were expiated from their ceremonial guilt, not real guilt. They had removal of their ceremonial pollution, of course, not real pollution. They had access to the temple. Well, of course, not the real temple where we draw near to. But, for instance, if they didn't go through this, they couldn't even assemble with the, their congregation. They may not, if they were defiled, they had to go through these sacrificial systems, of which, they, again, the Old Covenant was uh, many, many pages written about. But even their priest, even the high priest, could not actually eat of their sacrifice of atonement, and therefore they were always at this arm's length of a Amen. perfect fellowship with God. Amen. And of course, that's the reason ours is so much better. Now, in the first uh, Hebrews, the 13th chapter here, the writer has said that we have an altar that they cannot even participate Amen. in. Well, of course, in that altar, it Amen. must be and is of a much higher nature because the sacrifice upon that altar is Jesus himself as you well know. And the scriptures now tell us by him being placed on that altar that we have been set aside to serve God. Now that is a, a biblical definition of sanctification. I am talking Amen. here of that being set aside to serve God and I'm calling it sanctification which is what he's comparing the Old Covenant too, when those people were set aside by their sacrifices in which they could serve God. Now this is the sanctification that I'm principally going to be talking about this morning, but I will head it into practical applications with our personal sanctification that takes place experientially. Now, Jesus himself said, and as we have heard quoted, so the one who feeds on me shall live because of me. That's Amen. our participation Amen. in yeah. our sacrifice. Yeah. We participate in it as much as they participated in it. Further, in this order, we can have no access to God unless we do partake of the body of Christ in Amen. that sense. Amen. Now, Amen. Uh, it has been well spelled out, but I want to emphasize this. What do we mean when we say we partake of our sacrifice or partake of the body of Christ or to partake of the blood of Christ? Well, it's not uh, oblivious to a man of faith. The man of faith knows that he participates in what Jesus' sacrifice was offering when he trusts what that sacrifice was intended to do and that sacrifice was intended to give you justification and if you believe it you'll have it and that sacrifice was intended to give you sanctification and if you believe that you can appropriate it Amen. now I love sanctification and I love justification they were both offered by the blood of Jesus Christ, as we're going to see over and over and over. Now, this sanctification is necessary for us because it, in the sanctification portion, that is 
the thing that gives us ready access to the throne of God. That's the portion in which we can favorably have dialogue with God and have fellowship with him. Amen. Sure, there's complete reconciliation in the terms of justification, but this close fellowship is because of sanctification. Amen. Now, a comparison here is we have the real blessing of the sacrifice. Not a ceremonial blessing, but a yeah. real blessing. Yeah. That means when we sit down with God in the heavenly places and draw near unto him, we are feasting with him in his reconciled deity. Now, I don't want to be in fellowship with an angry God. Amen. And quite Amen. frankly, before I was reconciled, before I was sanctified, before I was justified, he was in an unhappy state. Now, not many of us think of God in that state, but I'm telling you that the blood of Jesus Christ calmed even his spirit, yeah. or calmed yeah. God, placated God, satisfied God in the shed blood of Jesus yeah. Christ. God's justice had been satisfied. Yeah. And, we, uh, and I like to think of the blood of Jesus Christ first taking care of the problem in heaven. Amen. 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 And then it can, if it's not taken care of in heaven, it won't do any good to take That's care right. of it on this earth. That's right. And so Amen. it, now of course even the prophets talked about this, we won't go into them, I've, I've, uh, but God first had to take care of his mind and his throne. So his law was honored by Jesus. His law was magnified by him. The sacrifice had allowed mercy to operate the wrath of God had been placated, the offended God over. Now we could gain all the blessings as if the law had never been broken by me. And Amen. You know what, uh, now that, of course, is feasting with a reconciled deity. Now from our point of view, of course this is God's point of view too, it removed my old man and Adam. It created in me a new man in Christ. Amen. Now, what I'm telling you there is sanctification's no light matter. If it killed Amen. my old man in Adam and created in me a new race of person, the new man in Christ, it is no small matter. Amen. And the blood of Christ does not deal in peripheral issues. Amen. It deals with Amen. a real problem. Yeah. And my real problem was I was in Adam. I was under a law of sin and death. Yeah. I needed to be under the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Amen. And of course the blood can do that. Oh my, what a powerful move that was when it made me a new creature. Now I'll have more to say, more to say about that later on. But now, from uh, I have the enjoyment as a new creature in what God enjoyed. And the old Adam never could have enjoyed it. I don't care if you forgave his sins every day until you changed his nature. He couldn't enjoy the things that God right. enjoys. Amen. And I'll tell you what, today it's pretty easy to see whether someone's a new creature or not. Do they enjoy what God enjoys? Amen. And uh, they have that fellowship with the Father. Yes. There's no... Uh, hard decisions to make on that. As I hear the Father to say to the Son, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. If I'm a sanctified man, I am well pleased to yes. the Father. Amen. Right. Amen. Absolutely. And when God yes. had his wrath placated, I say amen. I feel good about that, Father. When he says, this is my Son, of course, I say, this is my elder brother and this is my Savior. When God says, I am satisfied, I say, Amen. Amen. I Amen. love that. Absolutely. Now, as we look back to the ninth chapter here, I just read you, the power of even what happened 
under the Mosaical law or the Aaron priesthood. It says those people that were ceremonially unclean by that sacrifice had been sanctified. And as Brother Dallas says, how much more then will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself unblemished to God, do what? Cleanse our conscience, which is just another word of sanctification. That's what we're comparing here. We're comparing people sanctified under the old law. I've taken two passages. One said, they were sanctified, says Jesus sanctified you. Now that's another passage. They were sanctified. Now your consciences have been cleared. That's another definition of what sanctification is. Our consciences have now been cleared from acts that lead unto death. Well, the guilt of the conscience is a horrible thing. And we need to be free from that. All the constraints and all the terrors and all the jealousies and all the pollutions that a guilty conscience has, well, you can't enter the presence of God with that. It had to be cleansed. Amen. And, of course, Amen. this is what sanctification is all about, which was what the blood of Jesus was all about. We have been literally not moral, uh, not literally, not ceremonially cleansed. All of our old moral sickness has been granted spiritual health and wellness. Amen. And oh, boy, Amen. what a blessing. Now I'm going to tell you this day, as ever other day of the year, there are countless, I'd say millions, being spent by people for that very reason that they have a guilty conscience. Yeah. It's plaguing them. They are polluted. They have all manner of problems. And people have their signs up for sale, guilt removed. That's what the whole psychological industry is based on. Yes. And if a psychologist didn't have guilt to deal with, he'd be out of business. And if Jesus didn't have guilt to deal with, he'd have been out of business. But he dealt with it, and they ought to be out of business. And if you want guilt removed, it's free. And I doubt very seriously if you can buy it. You can't buy Amen. what God gives. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Now, I'm not saying that some Bring people... <laughs> I'm not saying that some people don't need to be taken out behind the woodshed <laughs> and helped out. I'm not saying some people don't need to go into the chemical lab and have some help. I'm certainly not saying that. And God forbid... But I just want to emphasize to you that our Lord and Jesus Christ shed his blood that you could have freedom of guilt and that Amen. that be taken care of through Amen. his sacrifice. Amen. And I just don't want it to be purchased. I don't want it to be glossed over. It took the high... I'm not saying... He purchased it. Amen. That's the highest price it can be paid. Amen. And Amen. no millions of dollars will take its place no matter who Amen. it's given to. He gave it to you free, but it paid the highest price of everything. I'm going to tell you, sin is not forgiven free. It's, you can Amen. say, I love the mercy of God, but I want to tell you that that in one sense was not forgiven. It had to be paid for. Yes. From your sense, it That's was right. forgiven. From God's sense, it cost everything. Amen. 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 The brother said yesterday, he gave all. Amen. It cost everything that heaven had. Yes. We need to keep that in mind when we just blindly say, well, God, I'll just ask him to forgive me for that. It cost the blood of Jesus Christ for Amen. that to happen. Amen. But thank God he did do it for us. Now, personally, I, what satisfied my conscience was seeing that God was just while he was justifying the sinner. Yes. That I, I could never cope 
with this until it dawned on me that God was just while he was justifying me. How could I be justified and it be right? Mm -hmm. And yet God did it, and when I grasp it, that did free my conscience. Amen. I just Amen. want to tell you, then I could come confidently to the throne of God. I could find happiness in communing with him. I wasn't scared of him anymore. I could walk in liberty, embracing the commandments that are written on my heart. Amen. Now I'm going to tell you, we've been asked about Jeremiah. We've been asked what comes to your mind when you talk about the new covenant. And we were told that precious thought that in the new covenant that our sins have been forgiven. And that, of course, is justification. Does anything else come to your mind? That he puts his laws into yes. our hearts and that Amen. is sanctification. Amen. 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 So even Jeremiah had a good grasp on both justification and sanctification. But it's of interest to me that he mentioned sanctification first. Now we grab justification, and well, we should. Coming from my background, we had to grab it, or, or it, it was about to get away from us, because, you know, we, we were pretty well on the road to trying to justify. We was on the road trying to justify ourselves. And of course, I say trying to, because you know. It didn't work, but the church was composed of two groups, those on the back seat that had tried and failed and was despondent about it and admitted it, and those on the front seat that thought they had done it and was being hypocritical about it, and that was a sad situation. <laughs> well, of course, now I don't judge by who's on the front seat anymore. In fact, I've... I've I've moved right on up a good bit closer myself so I can hear good and uh, just uh, tend to read lips and so it's easier to do. Now, I, I do want to emphasize, as everyone has, my conscience was helped immensely in grasping the justice of God. Now, the throne of God, according to scriptures, a lot of people don't know this, is upheld by something. Mm -hmm. The throne of God's upheld by something. And there's a statement in the Psalms that justice upholds the mm -hmm. throne. Mm -hmm. And there's a statement in Proverbs that mercy upholds the throne. But I'm going to tell you, when man sinned, that drove an arrow right between justice and mercy. Justice yes. demands the punishment upon the sinner and mercy requires that that demand be overlooked. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you what, justice wrestled with mercy. And even though David was a, is a beautiful writer with tremendous insights, he wrestled with that from page after page after page. He seems to grasp justice here and says, God, you've got to forgive our sins. And then he gets over here and he says, when are you going to forgive our sins? And how are you going to forgive our sins? And then he comes down to the bottom and he finally wrapped it up in the 85th chapter and he says, justice has finally met mercy. And they embrace. At the cross is where it happened. Amen. At Amen. the cross, Amen. justice finally said to mercy, have your way. And mercy finally said to justice, I have been satisfied. They embraced. More than that, the scripture says they kissed. What a romance. What an eternal romance when justice met mercy. No longer antagonistic. No longer willing to just shake hands. Embrace. That's what will happen when Christians ever find salvation at the cross. It's not a shaking of hands. It's an embrace. Amen. It's the holy kiss. It is no animosity between us. 
and the cross, the blood, is what brought them together. It saved them, and uh, therefore it's the blood that saved the cross, the, the throne of God, which I mentioned to begin with. Amen. Amen. Now, I just don't, I'm not a scholar enough about anything to barely get home, but uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to suggest to you that uh, I know what God was going to do if it hadn't worked. But I'm going to tell you, I can't figure out what he would do if the blood of Jesus Christ hadn't worked, but it did. Now, Amen. it's an interesting to me, the, uh, one could say Aaron's priesthood worked because the only thing I'm fear is God said it would work. Now, I don't have any problem with that, but praise God, Jesus' ministry was appointed because it worked. Amen. Now, do you get the difference? Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, these two guys up here do. <laughs> you need to think on that. It was a, see, Aaron's was appointed by God, and it's going to work because God appointed it. But in the case of Jesus, God says, I'm going to point that because it did work. There is Amen. something in that incarnation and in that suffering, the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ that is inherently Amen. efficient Amen. to do the job that it was supposed to do. Amen. And I can Amen. think of two, one to justify and the second to sanctify. Amen. And I believe that it did sanctify us. Amen. Now, of course, that is justification there was imputed. I assume we're talking about, you understand, sanctification that comes from imputation. Now, we look at the, uh, the clock. Yeah, we're okay. We look at the... I want, I want to look back at Hebrews, the ninth chapter there, but I don't want you to look in the King James. If you don't have the King James translation, just uh, listen to me for the moment. He says, And for this cause, the cause of sanctification, he is the mediator of a new covenant, mm -hmm. that by means of death. That, that, uh, that grabbed me. Well, of course I knew that he's not going to mediate a new covenant unless he dies. Uh, I knew we couldn't have a new covenant unless he dies. But the thing that grabbed me that was so poignant to my mind, yes, it took his death, but it takes my death to appropriate it. Amen. I cannot avail myself of yes. his death until I am ready to die. Amen. So then sanctification becomes a lot clearer to me. It's not trying to be better. It's not even being better. It's not getting better and better in every day, in yeah. every way. It's not a Sunday school slogan. God's not running a repair shop to repair broken humanity. As Amen. much as we'd like for him to, God's a creator and he loves to work in a creative field. And so instead of mending old Adam, he sends him to the discard pile. And Amen. in Christ starts a new race of people. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I tell you, we don't pay enough attention to the new creature that we are. We get bogged down to that old crew. We will to still think like the old man. We may not long want to act like the old man. We get confused in all of these things, but we need to think of ourselves as a new create, uh, a new creature, a new creation. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. And that new creation we want to partake of that new creation, and that new creation needs a new covenant, and that new Amen. covenant, if there's anything like the old covenant, then it's for the old covenant. Yeah. It'd just be a new in terms of time. What we need is a new in terms of sort. We live Amen. in a different world. We are in 
a spiritual world. We are a new creation, and we need a new covenant, and that new covenant was bought, paid, purchased, by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And of course that birth into that new covenant. It's not like it was in Adam. That is it is not a blood. That would just put us again. a Like a new person in Adam. With the same old miseries. The same old problems. As any drunk can tell you. Their problems can swim. We would have all the same propensities. We need a birth that is not by the will of the flesh, that is not of self-effort. It cannot be by the will of man. All the programs that tell the whole world what to do to be saved and what church to go to to get to heaven, that's not the birth we're talking about. We're talking about a birth Amen. that was purchased by the blood of Jesus, Amen. sent by Amen. God to this earth to give us an end corruptible seed and Amen. he was the Amen. firstborn of that and we have been told then that we are the firstborn we Amen. are that new creation Amen. now it's not from a corrupted Adam I would expect a different nature there was plenty wrong with the old nature the history testifies of it if you hadn't read your Bible it'll testify of it if you go to the book of Romans, mm -hmm. first few chapters, oh, how well does it testify of us. Now, I know in popular church circles and people that we tend to run with that everybody's got a little simple answer to these things of old Adam, well, let Jesus die for their sins. Well, of course, that's good. And, of course, he did. And if it hadn't, if he hadn't done uh, we would have been in plenty of trouble. But, of course, he died for our sins. But there's a whole lot more needed than just dying for old Adam's sins because now all you've got is old Adam that has his sins forgiven, but he's got all the same old sinful nature. He's living under the law of sin and death, and that's not the kind of creation that we need. Destroy it all, start all over with a new man, in Christ, he Amen. is that new man. Amen. He is what God is looking at. Amen. There is no other creation that ever been like him, not the earthly creation, not the angelic creation. He's that rare combination of heaven and earth, of man and God, and us in him partake of that divine nature, a new man, Amen. and that man is sanctified or it is not in there to begin with. Amen. And we need all, of course, appropriated after the blood of Jesus Christ by faith. Now, where this need was of the old man to be a new creature, God supplied, and even the Old Testament scriptures, as we have been told, really hearken on these matters. For instance, in Egypt, wasn't that blood? placed over the door, and wasn't the angel of death pass over them? What else happened? They eat the sacrifice and gave them power to get out of town from who was causing their trouble to begin with. Amen. That's Amen. sanctification. Amen. Now I love justification, but now I'm loving sanctification. <laughs> See, we've we, we got to have some power to move on. Yeah. What good does it do to go to the holy place if you don't know what to do when you come back into the real world we need power to operate with? Now the crossing of the Red Sea of those uh, Israelites, what did it do? It cut them off from the world of sin, destroyed the Egyptians. But what happened when they, they had to cross? What else? The Jordan. And what happened by crossing the Jordan? They got removed from the fruitlessness that was in the wilderness to begin with. What they produce out there? You've got to get into the Jordan. You've got to be sanctified to produce fruit. And the blood of Jesus Christ gives them that power uh, to go that far. Thus in the book of Romans, those first few chapters, five, six, we have the beautiful story of justification. But what happens when you get to the sixth chapter? You're not talking about altogether justification. You're talking about sanctification. You've got to move from justification on into sanctification. And the blood of Jesus Christ 
will give you that power to do that. Yeah. Now, let the water and the blood from the wounded side which flowed be of sin, a double cure, save from wrath, that's justification, and make me pure, that's Amen. sanctification. Amen. We've been saying it all of our lives, but yeah. believe it, it's none of our lives. What's the problem with imputed sanctification? There is not a thing in the world wrong with it. We Amen. sing better than we Amen. preach. Yeah. Thus on Calvary, we have in relation to our sins such statements as, Christ suffered for our sins. That's justification. The just for the unjust. He was delivered for our offenses. He gave himself for our sins. We have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of our sins. But now in relation to this problem of being the old man in Adam that had a sinful nature, the scriptures use such phrases as this, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. For the death that he died, he died unto sin once. Mm -hmm. That is, Adam and his race were executed and buried in Christ as he bore that old man to the grave away from the presence Amen. of God. Amen. Our old man was crucified with him that the body of sin might be destroyed, that we should no longer be enslaved to sin. I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, let, yet, but Christ liveth in me. Now, Romans, uh, the sixth chapter says, Reckon ye yourselves to be dead to sin. Yes. Now, it's not playing a game. <laughs> Amen. Uh, we're not talking about no make-believe. Amen. He wants you to understand right. that you yourself are dead to sin. Yeah. This yeah. is where the sanctification is talking about. Yeah. But to be alive unto God, that of course that's through faith by the power of the resurrection, we were resurrected. Amen. Oh, I love that fact. Now, by this new life, by this new life, I'm removed from an old life. Well, that's simple, but what was the old life? Well, it was in Adam, it was the world of law, sin, and death. Now, you all understand that. But in this new life, I have been removed from that power. Not even the power yeah. of death has yeah. dominion yeah. over me. That's right. Oh, you say, well, you're going to die, so what? That's, I'm just going into the presence of my God with him. Uh, uncorruptible body. What's death about all that? Uh, you know, you, that's, right. that's a totally different outlook on matters. I'm removed from that old life. I have a new life, and that new life is the person of Jesus. I must tell you that. That is the eternal yeah. life, Amen. that we Amen. have the Son, and this is life. Yeah. And Jesus is in me. Now, one could say to live my life, but really he's in me to live his life. You know, the yeah. world cut him off early, so he's, uh, it's not over. He wants to live That's his right. life in us. Right. And as we accept that by faith and constant faith toward him, why, that is sanctification. Now, my, my life's hid. Amen. So, uh, bothers me at times when people look at me if they can see Christ or if they see me and my life's supposed to be hid. And I like that term hid for several reasons. I like the sequestered part about it. You know, we're going to sequester my life. It's protected, see. Yeah. It's, it's got a lot of protection in there. Now, a couple of practical, no, a couple of verses and then some practicalities before we finish. Romans 6 says that we die to sin. I want to consider the implications about this from sanctification's point of view. Now, the whole thrust, we die to sin. The whole thrust of, of uh, Paul's discussion here is to show us that what happened to Christ or in Christ happens to us. Uh, that, that's the whole Romans 6, especially the first half of it. Now, now, what did happen to Christ? He came into this world. Well, it's the world of Adam. He came into the world of sin. Now, when it said Christ died to sin, don't think for a moment 
and he was a sinner, uh, he's dying to this world of Adam. This is what we mean. Well, then we in him die to this world. He died to that world. Now, how did he die to this world? By sanctifying himself. Uh, Jesus, Amen. You, I could never have Amen. called Jesus sanctified if he hadn't got to the holiest of holies. Mm -hmm. If he had not made it there, then how could he? you call him sanctified? Now, he was, he was setting himself aside for the service of God. Amen. And his service of God required that sanctification. And that required that he get all the way through the cross, through the grave, out of the grave, into heaven itself to present himself. Yes. And that yes. is complete sanctification. And he says even to the Father in the high priestly prayer. Now everybody knows everything else about that prayer, but only I and Brother Fred Blakely talks about he says, Father, I justify myself that they may be justified. If I don't, I'm going to get there that they may be justified. Amen. And he did, and we are. Now, Amen. we have then moved in our new birth out of the realm, rule, reign, tyranny of the creature that we were in Adam to the reign of life in Christ. We're not under the law of sin and death. They don't have dominion over us. We have the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, I, I want to uh, quit, but I'm not, because the way these things work, I'll leave it up to theologians. I'll just tell you the way it works for me in my life. I do not consider that God justified my old vile body. I, I don't think that way. Because mm -hmm. if he had justified it, I don't know why he'd send it back to the dust. I, so I don't think in, I think in terms of him justifying the real me. This sin, the yes, vile amen. body, is not the real me. Yes. Amen. But now I, in my life, carry that a step further. I don't think he sanctified my vile body. Um... I think the imputed justification is the real me, the inner me. I don't think so much. Yes. Uh, the, you see, he's going to give me a new, incorruptible body, which Amen. makes a personal sanctification more complete. Mm -hmm. So I don't think for, for one moment that even this body, the flesh that I have today, is 100% sanctified, though I believe that me, the inner spiritual man, has been 100% sanctified. But I also believe that the realization of that 100% man that stands justified and sanctified before God is empowered to straighten out what's left of this vile, vile body Amen. and to be attentive to that on all occasions. Amen. But that power comes from his blood. It does not come from myself. And so if Amen. I get myself straight, yeah, I cannot take even credit for that because Amen. he in his shed blood gave that positional uh, power unto me that stands me before God. Amen. So the realization of imputed sanctification is what gives the power. Uh, now, uh, as a new man in Christ, I do believe that I am justified and sanctified. Now, I know there is accommodative language, for instance, by Paul in Ephesians 4, and I, I wouldn't want to I dodge this at all when he said, put off the old man, put on the new man. But I do think that he is more specifically speaking in the practical applications of Ephesians here, not the doctrinal part, that, Leon, quit acting like you were the old man. Don't be, quit acting. You're a new man in Christ. Mm -hmm. Then act that way. Of course, we need some experience from us. So I can deal then with my body, which is vile, only by knowing that I'm a new man. 
And when I know that I'm a new man, then I can experience sanctification because power comes from the realization of who we are. The old nature is conquered only by realizing my new self in its new status and position. Amen. Now, that, now Romans 7 and 8 deals with these things, and my time is going to get away. But I want you to know that I feel personally that I'm sharing then in a salvation. I'm not earning a salvation, justification, sanctification, either, but I'm sharing in this, in my new man with God. And so until then, I'm going to do what Peter said in the fourth chapter as Christ suffered in the flesh. I'm going to arm myself with the same man that we should no longer live the rest of the time. You know what time is that? This body's time. See, I told you it wasn't going to go. Anyway, that, that's the rest of the time of the body. My time is forever. But till, as long as this body here is, he says, realize who you are. Don't yield to the lust of men, but in a positive sense, conform to the will of God. And, you know, uh, you remember the scripture but John. He says, he that had this hope in him purified himself. Yeah. Well, now what hope? Well, it's seeing the Lord, seeing the Lord as he is. And well, what is our Jesus? He is holy, holy, holy. Amen. And so then why shouldn't I want to be that way too? Now that, of course, is not imputed. That is, I need to, of course, uh, engage in personal sanctification or experiential sanctification. Now, Romans 6, 12 says, then, this may be the first command that in the book of Romans, I hadn't really thought about it. I guess it is. Uh, Let not sin, therefore reign in your mortal body. Yeah. Everything else up until this was showing the glory of our imputed justification and sanctification. But now, what's that command? Let not sin reign in your mortal body. Yes, you, you see, you have been sanctified, yes. but now bring it to bear on your mortal body. Sanctify yes. this. Don't let Amen. sin reign in. Well, it wouldn't do a big good world till an old man had not that. Why? Well, it may last 30 minutes. You can always tell whether someone's in Adam or not is tell them what the Lord wants them to do. And if it if they can't do it, uh, keep it, you know, or their little promises for just a few minutes, they're right on back to the old way, you know, they're in Adam. That's in right. Christ, of course, uh, it, it brings, it, there's power there. Amen. I want to emphasize the blood of Christ has right. power. So in light of who I am in Christ, what, what kind of body should I have? I know what kind of body I should have. I should have a glorified body. But until then, let me glorify it all that I possibly can using his power. Why, the very question engenders personal sanctification. Yes. Amen. The very Amen. edge sends you on the road. It does. So it's not just a desire to be happy. It's not just a desire, well, sin's wrong. Let's fight that. Besides, I may go to hell if I don't. You know, I want to look like a Christian. I'd feel, you know, if I go over there, I hope they, I look like one. All that is, well, I won't say it's garbage, but it's nearly getting there. It, it's some pretty marginal motives uh, for Amen. sanctification. Look, Amen. I, mean, I know who I am in Christ. Amen. And I know that God wants all the works of Satan undone in me. Amen. And I'm just going to get on the road right now uh, to improving my body because I know who I am in Christ, a sanctified, justified person. Realizing then that all that Jesus did for me, if I allowed sin to reign in this mortal body, would be the greatest affront to our Savior that I could possibly do. Amen. This is the will of God that you be sanctified. Mm -hmm. Jesus sanctified himself that we could be. Now, in closing, our worst condition was never beyond the reach of grace. Amen. Our best condition always demanded grace. Amen. Personal sanctification is therefore anchored in the grace of God. Unless Christ had shed his blood and made me a new 
person in him and gave me positional sanctification. I could never have experienced significant growth in personal sanctification. Grace disciplines is what I'm saying. <laughs> and that's, Paul put it more succinctly. Those of us then who share the blessings of a sanctified being that we are, enjoying the blood of Jesus, must undergo the fatigue of supporting it. Amen. In Amen. personal, experiential sanctification. And I'm going to tell you right now, when you try to sanctify your life, it's going to cause you pain. Amen. It's Amen. going to cause you pain. That's right. It is not pain free. It was pain free for him to sanctify my inner being. It will not be pain free for him, for us to sanctify our body. So Paul could say, and will you say, or can you say, I fill up in my flesh what is still yes. lacking yes. in the sufferings of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I Yes. I, I, I'm careful about this. I would not say for one moment that the sufferings of our Jesus was not sufficient for what it was intended to do, and that was to redeem me, justify me, sanctify me. But I can tell you that not for one moment do I believe that Jesus can love you for me. I've got to do that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Can Jesus love me for you? Now, you know what love is? Well, love's keeping the commandments. Now, if well, one kept the commandments, he would be sanctified. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you what happens in love. Love is the stretching, the straining, the exerting of your whole self. Mm -hmm. in behalf of the spiritual welfare of someone else. Mm -hmm. Now, everybody loves to talk about love, but I tell you what, you've got to get down to the rubber where it meets the road, and if you love someone, you will stretch and strain and hurt yourself in their behalf, in their spiritual behalf. No sense. Amen. And love Amen. is always vulnerable. Was the love of our Jesus vulnerable all the way to the gruesome cross? Amen. Amen. But that was his sanctification, and that will be our sanctification. His Spirit is in us, and if his Spirit led him to do that, it will lead you to do that. But it gives you that power on the way to do Amen. exactly that. So may God himself, sanctify you through and through Amen. that your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.